the bug is as yellow as the sun. The bug is as pink as, as the flower. As the years pass and we continue to walk on this homeschool journey, we're finding, learning, and certain visions are becoming clearer. Our whys on homeschooling, our objectives and goals, and even our methods and styles. One thing I chose to reclaim and my big why of homeschooling is freedom. And fortunately, early on, I found that, that freedom is much more than just homeschooling or schooling at home. The pressures, expectations of checking curriculum boxes can steal our freedom that many of us seek for in home education, and that was happening to us. Over the course of this past year, I've learned that our children have an idea, this innate nature of how and what they want to learn. I just need to observe and follow their lead. I've learned that the environment itself is the curriculum. Most of these resources mentioned today we did use for the entirety of the 2019-2020 uh, school year, and I tried my best to choose resources in different subjects. This resource is newer to us, but it's been loved on so much the past few weeks that I had to include it today. And it's the Nat Geo Kids Little Kids First Big Book of Series. We have Where, The World, and Why. The Big Book of Where takes the reader through a worldwide journey of unusual places, inventions, animals, and natural wonders. Where is the Earth's largest rainforest? Where is the biggest rock on earth? The Big Book of the World. This resource is a great introduction to people, places, weather, and cultures. Something else I enjoy about this series of books is that you'll find pages of experiments and games like this one, Leaping Like a Kangaroo. And the last is the Big Book of Why, which is a question we parents hear often. Uh, why can't we talk to animals? Why do balloons float? Another point that's valuable in this series of books is the level or age appropriate text. It's not too much for my kids, but it's enough to spark interest and questions and discussions. And Letters from Afar is a monthly subscription to a handcrafted letter sent via USPS. The letters are from Isabel as she's traveling and exploring the world. At every stop, she writes you a letter to tell you all about it. The artwork in these letters is just really something else. In the text, it's engaging and ignites um, curiosity, questions, a study, a unit study on people and places and cultures. Um, this is a good starting point for my even my older teens as well. And just so fun to receive such treasure in the mail every month. Uh, in every letter, there are hidden objects um, to search and find throughout the letter. So this one specifically from the Amazon rainforest is a message to decipher. My littles enjoy using their magnifying lens to find the hidden objects or messages. If you've been around my channel for the past few months, then you're probably exhausted of this resource, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it anyway because it is our most loved resource of the 2019-2020 school year. Hearth Magic Literature Guides are to accompany many of children's literature classics. With these guides, you get guided activities for each chapter. Activities like copywork, nature studies, journaling, watercoloring, recipes, handiwork. Within this one guide, you're covering reading, literature, geography, history, animal and nature studies, art. These guides will bring meaning to your homeschool days along with good classic literature, of course. Scholastic nonfiction sight word readers are our favorite method for memorizing sight words without a curriculum, workbook, or mundane flashcards. 
There are a total of four sets in this series, 25 books in each set. The focus of each booklet is just one sight word, so by the time Bella finishes reading through, she has memorized the sight word. I love that they're nonfiction living books as well. Musical multiplication from The Good and the Beautiful has been another big hit this school year. This is a set of four spiral bound books, book A through D, along with a playlist of 37 original songs for learning multiplication facts. The lyrics are catchy and wholesome along with the beautiful nature inspired images. What I love about this resource the most is that we get to enjoy it as a family during opening morning activities or car rides. Loose parts are a tool we use daily and for several subjects, most certainly not just math. Loose parts can be anything really like sticks, seashells, wooden pieces for crafting, stones, rocks, gems, acorns, beads. Loose parts math is encouraging your child to create patterns or duplicate one you've created. In sorting, it's in grouping, less or more activities, addition, subtraction, counting, number quantity, one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, loose parts can be used as a standalone tool or to complement well with other resources. So that brings me upon my next favorite tool for math, measuring tools. Bucket balances, scales, uh, measuring tape, ruler, a yardstick, measuring spoons and cups. I use these tools to ignite questions and spark curiosities like how many acorns equal in weight to one river stone. Which do you think might be heavier, a seashell or a wooden bead? We learn about measuring liquids in the kitchen and in the garden. We measure anything and everything, indoors and outdoors, heights, widths, circumference. Tracking and logging the growth of plants, comparing numbers, which is larger, which is heavier. Converting centimeters to inches to feet and tablespoons and teaspoons to cups and ounces. Fractions, decimals, addition, subtraction, estimating. And this is what we call living math. Bingo is a favorite teaching tool here. No matter what I'm teaching, uh, math concepts, phonics, holidays, vocabulary, geography, science, nature, you can purchase bingo sets anywhere from Amazon to Dollar Tree. I enjoy making my own for unit studies. Nat Geo sticker activity books, and there are many topics in this series. We have some for zoology or animal science, space science, and geography. While learning about Australia, we resourced to this atlas book where we learned the flag, animals, the national bird, population, people, places. There are sticker matching activities, coloring, mazes, spot it, spot the difference, word search, dot to dot. The pages are bright, lively, classic Nat Geo photography, but with a nice balance of fiction and nonfiction illustrations. Not only are the books fun, but engaging. My children retain the information perfect for travel to, for busy kits, car rides, road trips, and airplane rides. Activity books are a big hit in our home, and this is another favorite, the Dover coloring books. Again, many topics and themes in this series. Uh, there's phonics, like S is for Snowdrop Fairy. There are books for the subject of science, and we did learn so much from this one during a human body unit. Uh, so here we colored uh, about the immune system and we read the short informational passages. Uh, this one is on the skeletal system. We also have several for nature studies and unit studies. Uh, coloring is one of my favorite pastimes to share with my littles. It's calm and relaxing. We talk while coloring or listen to music, but these books add some educational twists to coloring. I also don't mind that my toddler colors in these because the books are so inexpensive. Okay, and so I know that I'm cheating a little bit with one more resource, but I couldn't leave this one out. And this is the Julia Rothman collection. I had to include this set because it gets used with just about every unit and nature study in our homeschool. 
the most obvious way to use this resource is as a reference book and it does have enough informational text for my younger children. My older children do need to do further research uh, through another source, likely the internet, but it is a nice starting point. It's my opinion that teaching our young children how to reference to a book and look through for information on specific topics is an important skill, a skill that sadly is almost a lost one with modern technology and Google access at our fingertips. My teen girl and myself love, love, love this set for nature journals uh, as inspiration or often just copying a spread. Also, because the text is minimal, I can assign copy work for Bella, my seven-year-old, out of this resource. This set is a valuable teacher tool for me. I can't tell you how many unit studies and nature studies these books have inspired in our years. This one specifically, Nature Anatomy, along with the newly released Ocean Anatomy, can be the spine, sort of speak, or curriculum tool for a year-long nature study. This is a nature study schedule based from this nature anatomy book by a blog, Sparrow and Lilies, for an entire school year of nature studying, and I will be sure to link this freebie down below. Friends, I hope that this video has inspired you to maybe free your homeschool from a box and to look all around you for learning opportunities because they are everywhere.